Dr. Lee Schultz is an agricultural economics professor at Iowa State University. He joins us right now and has some thoughts on what the two deals could mean for cattle and pork producers. We'll get his take on some of the latest cattle reports too. Lee, good to have you with us today. Good to be with you again. Before we get into some of the latest reports, the big news is that proposed deal to replace NAFTA. That means a lot for agriculture and specifically, what does that mean for the cattle market? Well, you hit on it. It does mean a lot for agriculture. It's been overwhelmingly positive when we look at many of the commodities that, that we talk about. We specifically look at NAFTA for the cattle industry. We're dealing with Mexico who imports uh, about 13% of our U.S. beef exports from a muscle meat standpoint. A large share when you look at variety meats, upwards of about a third of our variety meats are, are to the Mexico market. Canada is a little bit smaller share. It's about 9% of our muscle meats and, and only about 3% of the, the variety meats. So those are major markets, really the secondary markets uh, for beef just compared to, to the Asia markets. Now we look at the impact of the trade negotiations of NAFTA. First of all, tariffs really haven't been placed on the beef market. Canada did place some tariffs when we look at prepared beef, but there's very small volume of that going to Canada. So there really hasn't been an overall impact. We would say we've seen trade flow very significant so far to Mexico. Beef volume is up 9%. We're about similar for, for Canada compared to year ago levels. What I think it has done it is caused some uncertainty to the market and markets really loathe uncertainty. And so we've seen maybe a, a bit of a discount in the markets because of that uncertainty from the trade impact. But going forward, why the, the need for a very stable Na NAFTA uh, package is the need for growing our exports as we continue to see beef production increase, the need for the home for that beef, the export market is going to continue to be important. So having really duty-free trade access, on, on an uninterrupted access is very important. And really it provides a very efficient model when we look at beef production all the way to consumption where the U.S. is a major producer. We also bring in Canadian feeder cattle and then we send the, that products to the highest valued market. A lot of times that be in Canada and Mexico. And the latest cattle on feed report came out. What were some of your big takeaways from that? Any surprises with the report? Well, when we look at the, the number of cattle on feed, it, it was above year ago levels, 4.3 six percent above August 1 of 2017. <clears throat> if you look historically in the data, this is actually the largest August 1 cattle on feed number. Uh, recall though that this cattle on feed report is only for a thousand head plus capacity feedlots, so we're missing the smaller producers. But to give you a historical perspective, we have relatively large numbers of cattle on feed. Thankfully, we've seen a very pace marketing rate. Marketings were 5% above year ago levels. Actually, there was an extra slaughter day in July. So if you adjust it, marketings were about comparable to year ago levels. Uh, placement numbers, that was the surprise in the report. It was 2.4 per percentage points above year ago or above pre-report expectations. And year ago, it was 7.9% above uh, what we'd seen in 2017. And you mentioned those placement numbers. Any other numbers in particular that stuck out to you? Well, I think it is important to dig into that placement number some. The placements, a large majority of them, about 83% were lightweight placements. So the increase was due to placing lighter weight animals. The under 600 pound category and the 600 to 700 pound category, that really makes sense for two reasons. We've heard about drought-like conditions across much of the U.S. So I think we're moving some of those cattle into the feedlot a bit sooner. Also, just giving the timing of it. So looking at it as a July placement number, if we're looking at spring calving herds, that would make sense that we would see lightweight placements if they're going into feedlots, they're going in now. Really a broad stretch when you look at placements across states. Every state was up compared to year ago levels, except for South Dakota and Washington. 40% of the increase came from Kansas and Nebraska. If you include Colorado in there, that's 59% of the increase came from those three states. Really what's driving this, I think, is 
again, going back to the drought-like conditions, are increasing those placements some. But also, I think we've seen aggressive auction receipts. So there has been very many movement of cattle because I think when you look at across the commodity landscape, we're seeing lower feed prices, lower commodity prices. So some producers may be deciding to walk, walk that corn off the farm. And that's backed up by the Iowa cattle on feed numbers for less than 1,000 head feedlots showed that they were up placements 18% compared to a year ago level. So I think cattle are becoming a little more attractive for some producers because of the relatively low commodity prices. And when it comes to the slaughter market, there remains a pretty large inventory. Is the demand still there? And how high is that going to weigh on prices? Demand has been fairly robust if we look at 2018. Exports have been very strong, up 14% for the first six months of the year. We're seeing very strong packer margins. We're seeing relatively good strength at, at retail. And so I think the demand is really what's held, helped hold up the market to date, even with the relatively larger supplies. Slaughter for the year is up 3.2%. So yes, that's been weighing on the market some, but I think demand is really the key factor so far driving this market. And summer's wrapping up over the next few weeks. What's your outlook as we head into Labor Day? Well, I'm going to piggyback off the demand discussion we, we've already had. We look at right now, I think we're, we're really benchmarking off the, the Labor Day sales. We've, we've seen a downward trajectory since spring, since spring in prices, but really in August, prices have started to stabilize. I think that's really retailers stocking up for Labor Day, but also we're getting into that period now where that stocking has, has really come to a conclusion. Um, and now we're getting into that post-Labor Day period where demand typically wanes. Uh, but there is a caveat there. Last year, we seen the lowest prices for the year in August, and we've seen prices really continuously increase from that period. That was really due to strong demand situation. Exports helped drive that quite a bit. Um, so, you know, I'm not saying this is an, an analogous year, but, you know, given what we'd seen last year and the strength in demand we've had so far and the premium we're seeing in futures markets currently for some of those deferred contracts, I think there is potential to at least hold these prices or see some strength into the fall. And lastly, moving away from cattle and onto hogs, news this week that the Agriculture Department will be paying money to certain farmers hit by tariffs in the trade war with China. Hog producers are on the list. What can you tell them? Applications for the, the market facilitation program will be out on September 4th. Uh, the de some of the brief details uh, of the program are that they will be paying producers $8 per head um, for your inventory on August 1, 2018. And that will be paid on 50% of that production. So cut that August 1 inventory in half and then multiply that by $8 per head. Now, there is some qualifications for that. Uh, you do need to show ownership, uh, be actively engaged in farming, and your gross, just a gross income for the average of 2014, 15, and 16 needs to be less than $900,000. Also, they will only be paying a, a cap of $125,000 when, when we look at that August 1 production number and the $8 per head. Now, there's a few other parts of the, this aid package. Uh, they will also be committed to $200 million to agricultural and trade promotion, uh, which will be targeted to growing foreign exports in some of our current countries, but also some of the, the more growing emerging countries. And also, there will be a fur, food purchase program. Uh, so for pork, that equates to about $550 million that, that will be purchased off of the market in, in, the, in the form of, of pork uh, that will be used for food assistance programs. Um, so all of this is, uh, that factor will increase the demand and hopefully help prices. Uh, the trade promotion will help increase that export demand and then provide some income to uh, poor producers that, that were impacted by the, this trade conflict and the impact of the tariffs. Dr. Lee Schultz, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Happy Labor Day to you. Thank you, as well to the viewers. <laughs>